Electric outboard motors. I know some of you guys don't like this topic, but I've put together my little 2023 guide to electric outboard motors. Is it finally time for you to consider an electric motor? I know what you're thinking. Some of you are like, no, 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 I do not like this idea. This is terrible. Some of you love this idea and I get that as well. I honestly don't have a preference either way. If you've ever watched any of my videos, you'll know that I've had more two stroke engines than anything. But I also really like the idea of running an electric motor. And I'm not talking about just environmental causes or anything like that. I like other aspects of an electric outboard motor. I just think they're cool. But as many people know, the cost has always been the big hurdle. That and range. However, it's 2023 and factors such as competition, evolving battery technology and efficiencies in electric motor technology itself is actually changing the landscape. I'm not going to cover every company in this video. I'm going to try to hit on a lot of the major ones, but here's a few electric outboard companies that are looking to sell us something in 2023. One of the oldest ones is Elko. They're an American company that has been in business since 1892, manufacturing electric inboard and outboard motors for boats. They now offer a range of inboard and outboard electric motors with outboards ranging from five to 50 horsepower. Personally, I've never seen an Elko motor out in the wild. Have you? Torquedo. They're a European company founded in 2005. They now offer outboard motors ranging from one horsepower all the way up to 80 horsepower. Their motors are sold all over and even through companies like West Marine. Matter of fact, according to their website, over 100,000 boaters have chosen to use some type of torpedo system on their boats, which that's pretty wild. Another company you've probably heard me talk about before is E-Propulsion. They're actually a Chinese company founded in 2013. So they have outboards ranging from three horsepower up to 9.9 .9 horsepower. Now I have seen several local users running an e-propulsion motor on tenders and other small boats. And I've asked some of them and they've been really happy with their product. But here in 2023, there are other players who are new to the field or just coming out with products this year, including Newport Vessels, who previously just offered trolling motors they are going to start selling a three horsepower electric outboard motor. And you've probably read or seen something somewhere about how Mercury are coming out with electric outboards this year. They're going to call that product line the Avator. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Their first model they're coming out with is something called a 7.5E. That's not a 7.5 horsepower. Those numbers uh, have something to do with the watts, which are 750, I guess. If you remember Mercury back in the 70s, didn't they call their 7.5 horsepower outboards a 75? They've always liked to mess with numbers and I, I don't like that. I wish they would call things what they are. Another brand is Pure Watercraft. They've partnered with General Motors. They're doing larger engines and boat projects and they're offering a 50 horsepower equivalent outboard package. It's pretty expensive. And lastly, Vision Marine Technologies, they're making a 180 horsepower outboard package. Now I'm sure I've missed a couple of other players and companies, so please be sure to add any others that you know of in the comments below. But the thing is, when we think about how few outboard gas engine companies there are these days, the mere fact that there are so many electric outboard companies coming into this space should tell you something. This is the direction things are going. Hopefully with all of these new players, we as consumers will start seeing some better prices and more competitive products. So let's take a look at the actual costs from a purely consumer perspective to see where we are right now. So let's start with the cheapest and smallest name brand gas engine on the market right now which is this 2.5 horsepower Suzuki, which costs $875 from online outboards. What electric motors compete? Well, first of all, we have Torquedo. They make a two horsepower electric outboard 
with an integrated battery. So the battery's part of it, it's all one unit. That costs $2,250. You could almost buy three of the Suzuki's for that price. That's not very competitive. What are some other options we could look at? E-Propulsion makes their Spirit 1.0 plus three horsepower electric outboard motor. So it's half horsepower more. That is $1,449 from Tiny Boat Nation. Now, here's one of the things I don't understand, Tiny Boat Nation, and if you wanna chime in and explain why you did this, that's the cost of the propulsion motor, but I think you have to use their proprietary battery pack. With no battery, I don't think you can hook up another battery to it. Maybe you can, and that's where I'd like you to chime in and let me know, but you offer it like that with no battery. And with the battery option, which by the way, is a very cool proprietary battery. It floats in the water and everything. It's very nice. That three horsepower motor now comes to $2,600. It's not $1,449, it's $2,599 with the battery. And that is a motor that I have seen several times and it's nice. But is it $2,600 worth of nice? So what are some of our other options? Well, we have more options. As I mentioned earlier in this video, Newport Vessels offers their brand new Newport NT300 three horsepower electric outboard motor for $999. That's a lot cheaper than Torquedo and Deep Propulsion. Now, you also have to buy batteries with that. The smallest one they recommend is this 36 volt, 30 amp hour lithium battery, which is about $700. And it looks like it comes with, I guess, a charger or maintainer or something. So if you pair this $1,000 outboard with the $700 battery, now it's $1,700. Yes, it's twice as much as the gas one, but it's a lot cheaper than the other electric options. Now these are supposed to come out in March of this year. They're not out yet. Since those last two motors were three horsepower, perhaps we should up our horsepower of a gas motor just so that maybe we're trying to do apples to apples. Because unfortunately, the gas motor is coming 2.5 and 3.5, and then there's a bunch of these three horsepower electric options. Just for argument's sake, let's go on back onto all online outboards and look at a 3.5 horsepower. Here's this Tohatsu short shaft, 3.5 horsepower. That is $1,120. So let's compare those electric options to this. Well, the e-propulsion Spirit was $2,600, which is $1,400 more, which once again buys you a second engine. However, the Newport NT300 with the smaller battery comes in at $1,700, which is only $580 more. And maybe, because the battery is external, maybe if you don't have to use their battery, it could end up costing you less and being even cheaper. I don't know if somebody else sells a 30 amp hour, 36 volt battery, or, you know, some people build them themselves, but that could make the Newport one cheaper. Not cheaper than the gas one, but not much more expensive than the gas version. Now, of course, it's not available just yet, so I can't say how good or bad that Newport NT300 is, but it's a step in the right direction. And Newport Vessels, if you want to send me one of those to try out, Hit me up because I would love to try one of those out. Now also, whenever Mercury releases their Avatar 7.5, it will supposedly be similar in power to a 3.5 horsepower gas engine. But I have no idea how it'll be priced at this time. Okay, so let's go up to five horsepower options. We'll start with our electric options. Elko, their smallest outboard engine they make, is a five horsepower electric outboard. That is $2,610. There's no batteries in there. They recommend you buy two batteries that are $732 and a deep cycle battery charger for $250. Total cost of that package is $3,592. Ouch. What's a gas motor cost that's five horsepower? You know what? Let's go with something higher end this time. Go with something a little fancy. How about this Honda five horsepower right here? This one is $1,789. You know what two of those Hondas cost? $3,578. So you could get two new Honda motors 
for less than one Elko 5 horsepower. Now does it get better as we go up? Let's try some 6 horsepower options. So on the gas side, at the low end we've got a 2023 Tohatsu 6 horsepower that is $1,620. Also from Online Outboards we have this 2023 Mercury 6 horsepower that's $1,835. So I got two of them here, right? E-Propulsion, they offer something called the Navy 3.0, six horsepower outboard motor. It is $2,999 and the controller is $330. The reason they sell that separately is in case you want tiller control or other types of controls, I get that. So the total there is $3,329. And Torquedo makes something called the Cruise 3.0 TS. That's $4,298. None of those come close. How about 9.9 .9 horsepower? Maybe we'll have some luck there. So our cheapest one that I found is a Mercury 9.9 .9 for $2,480. And on the high end, let's look at this Suzuki 9.9. .9. And this one has a uh, control box with it. So I'm, I'm going all high end here, is $3,170. E-Propulsion Navy also makes a 6.0 electric outboard motor that is 9.9 .9 horsepower. With the throttle control, that comes up to $3,929. Elko also makes a 9.9 .9 horsepower electric outboard that's $2,910 but you need about $1,500 in batteries for that. And Torquedo makes the Cruise 6.0 TS that is $4,898. Ouch. We're still paying a significant premium to switch over to electric propulsion, especially considering since a lot of these small outboard motors don't use much fuel at all. So it could be several years to recoup the expenses of uh, buying an electric outboard motor. And by that time, the batteries might need replacing, which could be a really big cost, especially for the types that use like a proprietary battery pack, like e-propulsion and Torquedo. The major exception to this that I see right now is the Newport Vessels NT300. With its batteries being separate, even if a user can't source their own batteries more cheaply than Newport is offering them, it's not priced much more than a 3.5 horsepower gas engine. And it would be much easier to use and maintain. For me, that's the really big advantage of going electric. I mean, no gas, no oil, no warming up an engine, no noise. Spending an extra $600 to not have to deal with those things might really help put this new motor on the map. And who knows, maybe the new Mercury Avatar will not just be priced to compete with e-propulsion, but be priced to beat e-propulsion. And if so, you know who the winner in that is? That, that's us. We get to be the winner because we get cheaper electric outboard options. Now go check out this video right here and let me know what your thoughts are with regards to our electric future. As for me, I'm going to See if Newport has sent me an email yet, you know, offering me one of their motors. Nope, not yet.